Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on IDE comparison. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Today we are going to compare Spider, Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab on the basis of these seven features. So the first feature is installation. As we all know from previous videos that we need to install Spider and Jupyter Notebook by downloading the .exe file from Anaconda distribution website. Whereas Google Colab is a ready-to-use product available for which you just need to add a small extension to your Google Chrome browser. Second feature is launch. Now Spider gets launched in its own GUI environment whereas Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab both are web browser based IDEs. To launch Spider, you have to visit the Anaconda Navigator app and click on this launch button. Once you click on this launch button, Spider will get launched in its own GUI environment and this is how a Spider IDE looks like. For launching Jupyter Notebook, you have to click on this launch button and Jupyter Notebook will get open in your default web browser. This is how Jupyter Notebook environment looks like. In the same way, Google Colab is also a web-based browser IDE. Let's move to our next feature which is Internet Connectivity. So for Spider and Jupyter Notebook, you don't need an active internet connection. Whereas Google Colab is a cloud-based IDE, so you need an active internet connection to work on Google Colab. Next feature is Usage. So Spider is purely used for software development, website development and game development. Whereas Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab is used more for data science work. Right? So why we cannot use Spider for the data science work? The answer is in the next feature, which is visualization. So in Spider, we don't have much visualization features available. Whereas in Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab, we have a lot of features on visualization. Plus, you can make your code more readable for your user. Let's go to Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab to check out these features. So this is how Google Colab and Jupyter Notebook looks like. As you can see, we have this header sections where you can mention your headings. This sections known as Markdown in Jupyter Notebook. In the similar way, in Google Colab also, you can give these headings, which makes your code more readable and divides your code into section. For example, this is my import library section. And this is the section where I'm reading my database. This kind of features are not available in Spider. In Spider, you can simply give a one line or a multi-line comment like this but it won't be a big bold heading. Second thing, in Google Colab and in Jupyter Notebook, you have very good visualization available. You can in fact embed all the graphs and chart in parallel to your code in the notebook itself. Same visualization or image embedding is available in Jupyter Notebook also. Whereas this visualization features cannot be embedded or inserted in Spider. Alright, so our next feature is on data. So on Spider and Jupyter Notebook, you can read data from remote systems, from remote databases, or if data is available in your local laptop or desktop. But for Google Colab, you should have your data available in Google Drive. The last feature is on the power side. So Spider and Jupyter Notebook will have limitation on in terms of the CPU or GPU power available in your desktop or laptop. Whereas Google Colab has unlimited power available to it in terms of CPU, GPU and TPU. Now GPU stands for Graphical Processing Unit and TPU stands for Tensor Processing Unit. Now I don't want to go into detail because we are going to discuss more on GPU and TPU in our future section on neural networks and artificial intelligence. For now you can understand GPU and TPU in the way that they are more faster and they do more heavy lifting on neural network and artificial intelligence side. Alright guys, that's all for today. If you have any question, please feel free to post in the comment section. Happy learning and stay safe.